Hello, welcome to the course of Computer Network. My name is Sumit Kunji, and today we are going to start our third unit, which is all about the second top layer of TCP IP protocol suit uh, transport layer. So, before going into the detail of transport layer, I would like to brief you the last session which we have already studied. So, as you know, Computer Network is all about uh, network of computers and uh, network of computers is used for um, transferring information from uh, one end to the other or for the communication purpose but end systems uh, nowadays end systems are not confined to computers only it's an era of internet of things iot so in uh, iot uh, all the smart devices which can generate and produce some data can get connected with the internet and uh, they can transfer the information from one end to the other and they can share communicate they can share the information and communicate with each other so uh, it's going to be uh, like computer world would be obsolete nowadays for this particular subject because it's all about uh, end systems and under end systems any any uh, device any smart device which can uh, connect with the internet uh, can uh, come under this particular word computer so these different uh, devices uh, may have different platforms and uh, they have some different hardware different softwares but when uh, it comes uh, for communication purpose they all have to agree on the same platform and that platform name is tcp ip protocol suit which is uh, used for uh, transferring the information from one end to the other or you can say it's a practical approach for data communication so this tcp ip protocol suit is uh, inspired from osa model which stands for open systems interconnection and uh, this the practical approach, the TCP IP protocol suit is a practical approach for data communication. It's got five layers. The first one is application, which we have already studied in our last session. And the uh, second top layer is transport layer. The third one is network layer. The fourth one is data link layer. And the last one, fifth one is physical layer. So today we are going to start uh, transport layer. But uh, before that, uh, let me brief, brief you the application layer once application layer by its name says it, it provides you applications uh, it provides user access to the various applications which we use nowadays like uh, browsing the web pages uploading and downloading files sending emails using uh, uh, third-party software which is used for uh, down downloading the files or uploading the files and uh, there are many other applications which we have studied in our application layer uh, in, in those uh, applications main applications were web browsing uh, that application uses http protocol which stands for hypertext transfer protocol and this particular protocol uses port number 80 so here uh, as uh, uh, i'm uh, telling you about the port number used by http this particular port number is going to be used in our transport layer in the same way in the application layer we studied about uh, file transfer protocol uh, FTP and in the same way we studied uh, SMTP protocol which is used for pushing your mails SMTP protocol is used for uh, electronic mail application so we studied n number of applications at uh, application layer once these applications generate some data that data comes down to the transport layer through their apis api stands for application programming interface that we have already discussed so once data generated by the application layer comes down to the transport layer then the responsibility of transport layer starts and as uh, its name says transport layer it provides the transportation facility and that transportation facility is just like a logical connection between uh, two processes 
So uh, in the other words, we can also say transport layer provides us process to process delivery. And that process to process delivery means uh, transferring the information which is running inside a uh, end system uh, or I can say uh, the process which is running inside an end system uh, transferring that information to the other process which is running inside a destine or destination system. So here in this particular slide we see services and protocols. So uh, tra basically transport layer provides uh, us two type of services. The first one is a reliable one and the second one is fast communi communication between processes. So uh, these are the two different types of services provided by transport layer. The first service which is a reliable, a reliable one is provided by TCP protocol which stands for a transmission control protocol and the second service uh, which is fast communication between two processes is provided by uh, UDP protocol which stands for user datagram protocol. Both these services and these protocols uh, we will discuss in detail in our coming slides. But before that, here you must see uh, what is a uh, process to process delivery. Here, uh, these are the two end systems, this one and this one, and uh, they are communicating with each other. So once your uh, data is generated at this particular transport layer, that data comes down to this particular, uh, uh, sorry, once your data is generated by this application layer, that uh, data uh, comes down to the transport layer and then transport layer adds its information in the form of header and provides process to process delivery. That process of uh, adding the header along with the data generated by the application layer is called encapsulation and once uh, that data is encapsulated with the transport uh, layers header that that uh, payload becomes a uh, segment and that segment comes down to the network layer and as it is required network layer adds its information in the form of header along with that uh, segment which has uh, come down from the transport layer to the network layer and that again that process of adding header along with the segment is called encapsulation and then after encapsulation that segment becomes packet then that packet uh, comes down to the data uh, data link layer and usually uh, data link layer adds uh, header as well as uh, trailer along with that uh, packet which has come down from the network layer and that encaps after that encapsulation process that uh, packet becomes frame then that uh, frame is given to the physical layer and physical layer uh, transfers uh, that uh, frame uh, through uh, this particular path and once your data is reached at this particular system it uh, is uh, delivered to the data link layer. Data link layer removes its header, uh, header and trailer part and that frame uh, then becomes packet uh, and that packet is delivered to network layer then network layer removes its header and deliver uh, uh, after removing that uh, header uh, that packet becomes segment and uh, network layer uh, delivers uh, or passes that particular segment to transport layer and then transport layer examines that particular uh, header from that segment and decides where to transfer that particular information in this particular application layer. So here what I mean to say is process to process delivery is nothing but communication or communication between two processes as this particular system can run n number of processes or n number of applications and this particular system can also run n number of processes but communication between two processes is the responsibility of transport layer. So as we will see in our uh, next slide that 
this uh, type of logical connection between uh, two systems is provided by network layer and logical connection or communication between in between two processes is provided by transport layer so here in tcp ip protocol suit logical connection is provided by two layers transport layer and network layer but we need to know the difference between them network layer uh, provides the logical connection between two nodes transport layer provides a logical connection between two processes so first of all we need to understand the difference between node and a process so as i told you in the last slide that this particular system can run or this particular node can run n number of processes so it's not about transferring the information from this system to this particular system it's all about transferring the information from the process running inside this particular system to the process which is running inside this particular system this is called process to process delivery that will see in the detail in our uh, next slide but here uh, you can uh, understand this process by this particular analogy as well which is mentioned in this particular slide so here we see uh, that 12 uh, kids are residing in uh, Anna's house and uh, 12 kids are residing in Bill's house and they want to exchange their letters so in this particular analogy we can assume uh, houses are just like the host kids are, are just like the processes processes means processes uh, which are running inside a host or running inside a machine so in a single machine we can run n number of processes so here you can see uh, there's a single host uh, Anna's house uh, in which we have 12 kids that means 12 processes are running in this particular uh, system or host and uh, the letters which they are going to exchange uh, can be considered as the messages which are exchanged between uh, the kids here uh, you can uh, assume transport layer is just like uh, the service provided by Anna and Bill to their kids uh, because once they receive their letters they will distribute their uh, respective um, letters to the kids so they are acting as a transport layer protocol and um, network layer protocol is just like providing the postal service so as i told you earlier as well uh, it's a very simple difference between these two things logical connection between two nodes and logical connection between two processes so here we need to understand the difference between two nodes and two processes node is nothing but it's an end system which can run n number of processes inside it so transport layer is responsible for providing process to process delivery and just down to that layer network layer network layer is responsible for providing node to node delivery or node to node communication so both of them are required for a fruitful delivery of data so here we see uh, in this particular slide uh, the two uh, types of services or transportation facility provided by transport layer the first one is a reliable facility reliable communication provided by transport layer uh, which is done with the help of TCP protocol which stands for uh, transmission control protocol so along uh, with reliability this particular protocol provides us congestion control flow control uh, it also provides us error free uh, delivery and ordered delivery of data because of the connection setup before transferring the information so TCP is the a reliable protocol which is used by 
elastic applications which cannot tolerate loss of data elastic applications are those applications which cannot tolerate loss of data but that, uh, those applications can tolerate some delay but cannot tolerate loss of data but look they need reliability in their communication which is provided by our tcp protocol and other type of service provided by or transportation facility provided by transport layer is fast communication between two processes and that type of service is provided by UDP which stands for user datagram protocol but this particular protocol is also called a unreliable protocol because it doesn't uh, guarantee you the delivery of the data and it uh, doesn't provide the ordered delivery of the data it gives you the best effort delivery that means it provides you only process to process communication with its best efforts it doesn't provide you the guaranteed delivery of data or ordered delivery of data but as it uh, provides you process to process delivery without providing these facilities so this particular protocol uh, is a very uh, fast protocol because of the size of its header uh, uh, this part, the size of the header we will discuss uh, in our coming slides tcp size of uh, tcp header is much much greater than size of udb header that's why this particular provides you fast communication between two uh, processes so uh, in our coming slides uh, we will uh, study these two protocols in detail as uh, i told you uh, that uh, tcp protocol is used by elastic applications in the same way uh, udp uh, protocol is used by those applications uh, which require fast communication so UDP provides you fast communication but uh, it's a type of uh, protocol which doesn't guarantee the delivery of data so it varies it's like uh, it, it is completely up to the application uh, which type of uh, service uh, is required by that particular application and that type of service is provided by transport layer so before uh, going into the detail of uh, process to process delivery we must understand what is a port number so uh, as i told you earlier that uh, node to node delivery is different from process to process delivery so node to node delivery is being done with the help of ip address provided by network layer and process to process delivery is being done with the help of port number provided by transport layer a ip address is required to identify this particular machine but a port number is required to identify a process which is running inside this particular machine so this is the basic difference ip is used at network layer to identify an end system or a node port number is a 16 bit number used for identifying process running inside a machine inside a node so port number is of 16 bits long and uh, total port numbers which we have are 65536 so these uh, 65536 port numbers are uh, divided into three categories first category is uh, well known port numbers which starts from 0 uh, to 1023 1024 port numbers are inside the first category 0 to 1023 and the second category is called registered port numbers it starts from 1024 to 49151 
and the third category is uh, uh, ephemeral uh, category uh, which starts from 49152 to 65535 so these are the three categories uh, in our port numbers the first category port numbers are provided to well known applications which uh, usually runs inside the servers so uh, the processes which are running inside uh, the server side are usually provided the uh, well known uh, port numbers because uh, as we all know in a client server architecture server should be well known because communication is always started from the client side so client before uh, um, connecting with the server client must know the IP address and the port number of a particular process which they are communicating with so in process to process delivery we need to have IP as well as port number so server, uh, server side port numbers are provided um, from the first uh, port number category well known category and the client side processes uh, are provided by the third category that is called ephemeral category of port numbers and that port number is generated by the operating system which is random in nature for a particular process uh, which is running inside that particular machine so uh, so these are the three uh, categories of port numbers and uh, uh, now I hope uh, you guys are clear with the port number uh, which is of 16 bits long which is used for identifying a particular process running inside a machine and uh, here we see in this particular diagram we have uh, two end systems this one and this one how uh, they are communicate which with each other how uh, this particular system can transfer the data uh, from a process running inside this particular machine to a process running inside this particular machine so first of all uh, application layer generates some data that data comes down to the transport layer and this transport layer provides us two types of services it is completely up to the application which is generating the data that which type of service uh, uh, which type of service this particular application wants to use at transport layer reliable or unreliable it is completely up to this particular application once that data uh, um, comes down to the transport layer transport layer uh, provides some information in the form of header and uh, adds or encapsulates that particular header with the data which has come from the application layer now we must know what is that information provided by transport layer and why transport layer provides that particular information in the form of header the responsibility of transport layer is process to process delivery and for uh, fulfilling that responsibility transport layer needs to provide some information and that information is port address so transport layer provides source port number and destination port number in that particular header source port number if it's a client side source port number would be a randomly generated number by the operating system and uh, transport layer provides uh, that number to that particular application and destination port number uh, most of the time in client server ar architecture that port number is well known so at transport layer transport layer uh, transport layer provides two port numbers the first one is source port number which is uh, randomly generated by the operating system and provided to the particular process running uh, at the client side and destination port number which is always 
a well known port number if this particular system is acting as a client and it is initiating the communication so once uh, that data which has come from the application uh, layer encapsulated uh, with the header provided by transport layer and in that header we know uh, transport layer uh, has provided source and destination port numbers so once that encapsulation process is done that uh, payload which has come from the application layer becomes segment and that segment comes down to the network layer and at network layer network layer provides its information in the form of header and the main information inside network uh, layers header is source and destination ip addresses so at network layer source and destination ip addresses are required for node to node delivery and at transport layer source and destination port numbers are required for process to process delivery so once uh, that segment comes down to the network layer and network layer adds its information in the form of header with that segment that segment becomes packet and that packet comes down to the data link layer and data link layer again responsible for node to node delivery that we'll discuss later but data link layer adds its information in the form of header as well as trailer this is the only layer present in this particular uh, tcp ip protocol suit which provides header as well as tra uh, trailer and after uh, getting encapsulated that packet becomes frame and that frame comes down to the physical layer and this physical layer is responsible for uh, providing uh, uh, physical media uh, or it, it, that, that medium can be wired or wireless so uh, that frame is uh, passed to the uh, routers and here you see three layers only so this is the question arises at the end system you will find all the five layers but uh, during the uh, pathway uh, or I should say this is mash of routers it is network core and in network core you will find uh, routers and at routers uh, you find only these three layers of TCP IP protocol suit not the complete TCP IP protocol suit which you find at the end systems so there's a reason behind that at routers uh, router is a data communicating equipment which communicates your information which takes your information from one port and passes your information from the other port uh, router doesn't have any process it doesn't have any application so uh, application and transport layer are not required at the transfer uh, at the routers because uh, routers are DCE it means data communicating equipments these are DCE devices and systems are DTE devices DTE which is stands for data terminating equipments so at uh, DTE devices complete TCP IP protocol suit is used and at DCE devices uh, you uh, that, that particular device may use three layers of TCP IP protocol suit. Some devices may use only two layers of uh, TCP IP protocol suit, and some devices may use only one layer of uh, this particular TCP IP protocol suit. So, router, uh, so router is a device uh, which uses uh, three layers of TCP IP protocol suit network, data link, and physical. Uh, we have uh, already discussed uh, this thing in our last sessions so once your data is at its destination data link layer again uh, removes its header and trailer and passes that information up to network layer network layer again removes its header and passes that information to the transport layer now the responsibility of transport layer starts at the destination transport layer examines its header and um, finds 
two things source and destination port numbers so at the destination side transport layer examines the destination port number and decide where to transfer that particular data so it is completely up to the destination port number because this particular machine or destination may run n number of processes but the data which has come to the transport layer is destined to only one particular process and that thing is decided with the help of port number so that is how port number is used for identifying a particular uh, process running inside a machine and transport layer uh, uh, completes its responsibility of process to process delivery uh, in this particular uh, diagram as I uh, told you so that is how it's being done so uh, here we'll see how processes are going to communicate with each other and uh, how multiplexing is done at the sending side uh, of a machine and how uh, demultiplexing is uh, done while receiving the data uh, inside a machine so these are the two processes um, done by transport layer with the help of port numbers and uh, also called process to process delivery but before going into the detail of uh, these two processes multiplexing at sending side demultiplexing at receiving side uh, we must know this particular thing which you see over here uh, in yellow it's it's a socket so we have already discussed uh, socket in our last session but uh, let me remind you uh, once again that socket is nothing but an API application programming interface and it is nothing but it's a gateway for a process and process is identified by a particular port number so socket is a kind of gateway for a process where the data goes out and comes in for a particular process so it's a kind of gate through which you go out and you come in as simple as that but this particular socket is identified with the help of two things and those two things are we have already discussed in the last slide IP address and port number IP address is used to identifying a particular machine and port number is used for identifying a particular process running inside that machine so the combination of IP and port number will get you the socket address or socket of that particular process with whom you want to communicate so it's it's a simple thing we have already discussed it so here we'll see how multiplexing is done at the sending side so this is a machine which is going to send data from these two processes p1 and p2 to uh, uh, these two processes p3 p4 running inside different machines so at the sending side uh, these two processes at the application layer generate some data these uh, data are passed through their sockets to the transport layer now transport layers responsibility is process to process delivery and uh, that is being done with the help of headers provided by transport layer and in those headers we have uh, information like source port number and destination port number so the data which is coming uh, from process one when that data comes down to the process layer through this particular socket transport layer adds its information in the form of header and in that header transport layer provides source port number port number of this particular uh, process p1 and destination port number of this particular process which is p3 so at transport layer source port number is p1 destination port number is p3 in the same way when uh, the data of this particular process comes down to the transport layer through this particular socket transport layer 
provides a source port number and destination port number. Source port number would be P2 and destination port number would be P4. So that is how transport layer is going to uh, design segments for these two different processes which are running inside the same machine. Once uh, they uh, once the transport layer designed uh, these two segments after encapsulating different headers with them the moment uh, transport layer uh, is done uh, with its responsibility it passes these two uh, segments to the network layer and at the network layer network layer uh, responsibility is node to node delivery so for that responsibility network layer has to add some information uh, uh, in the form of header uh, and that information is source and destination IP addresses. So in uh, these uh, two segments uh, which have uh, come uh, from the transport layer, network layer adds source and destination IP addresses. But uh, in both the uh, segments, source IP will remain same. Destination IP would be uh, one for this particular system. The other one is for this particular system. But in both the segments, network layer provides the same IP address of the source. So here is the process of multiplexing is done. Uh, data coming from these two processes at network layer provided uh, the same source IP but at the transport layer both the uh, segments are provided different source port numbers but at network layer both the uh, packets are provided same source IP addresses. So this is the process of multiplexing which is done at the uh, sending side while uh, data is coming from transport layer to network layer and uh, after that th that, uh, that data comes down to the data link layer. Data link layer uh, does its responsibility and passes the information to their respective destinations. In the same way how demultiplexing is done while receiving the data. Once uh, data from P4 and P3 um, are coming uh, to this particular system, both the um, segments or I should say both the frames are destined to both the pa I should say packets both the packets from these two systems are destined to this particular system so this particular system is receiving the data now so once uh, packets are at the network layer of this particular system network layer uh, because this particular system has to provide the IP address of this particular system and this particular system has to provide the IP address of this particular system so uh, once we have packets at network layer of the destined system which is this one network layer removes its header and uh, pass that information up to the transport layer now responsibility of um, transport layer starts transport layer examines their header examines their destination port numbers and passes those segments to their respective processes with the help of destination port addresses present in their respective headers. So both the packets are destined to this particular machine. Once those packets are at the network layer, network layer passes those packets to transport layer. Now here the process of demultiplexing is done 
is done by transport layer with the help of their destination port numbers by examining their headers so once transport layer gets to know about their respective processes or process addresses it uh, passes uh, those segments to their respective processes so it's a kind of demultiplexing both the packets are destined to this particular single machine but at the transport layer they are demultiplexed to their respective processes which are p1 and p2 from p3 and p4 so that is how multiplexing and demultiplexing is done multiplexing is done while sending the data and demultiplexing is done while receiving the data so that is how it's done and here you see uh, this this uh, format of segment uh, it can be tcp it can be udp uh, you see uh, it's a 30 bit uh, 32 bit in length half of the bits are provided to source port number and half of the bits are provided to destination port numbers and as as we know that uh, port numbers are of 16 uh, bits long so here you provide the source port number here you provide the destination port number and uh, uh, these fields are uh, varied uh, with their respective protocols if you use uh, tcp as we all know tcp provides us a reliable service then you will find a lot of fields in this particular area but uh, once uh, you will see udp uh, segment uh, header you will not find much fields over here so these the two fields are mandatory in uh, both both type both types of services tcp as well as udp because uh, these are the fields which are used for providing uh, process to process delivery uh, process of multiplexing process of demultiplexing so here you can see uh, host receives IP datagram when a host receives a IP datagram it has source and destination uh, IP addresses and uh, once uh, that packet uh, is at the network layer network layer removes its header um, passes it to the transport layer transport layer um, has uh, its header in which you will find source and destination port numbers so the combination of ip address from the network layer and uh, port uh, number from the transport layer will get you the socket address which is a gateway for a particular process at which you have to deliver that particular information which you got in this particular data run. so that's how process to process delivery is done with the help of port number and uh, uh, we will study tcp and udp in our coming slides shortly thank you